The Tomb of Kai Ding, Vietnamese, Lung Kai Ding, Chu Han, Ling Ki Ding, officially Ing Mausoleum, Ing Lung, Chu Han Ing Ni, is a tomb built for Kai Ding, the 12th emperor of the Nguyen dynasty of Vietnam. It features a blend of Vietnamese architecture with Western styles. The tomb was completed in 1931 after 11 years of construction. It is located on Cho Chu Mountain, near the former capital city of Hue. The tomb became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1993 as part of the complex of Hue Monuments. In 1916, Kai Ding became the Emperor of Vietnam after his predecessor was exiled by the French colonial government. Kai Ding worked closely with the government of France, and by the end of his reign, he was considered to be nothing more than a salaried employee of the French government. Due to this close collaboration, he was very unpopular amongst the people of Vietnam. Like a number of Vietnamese emperors, Kai Ding desired the preparation of a tomb in anticipation of his death, but he was the last member of the Nguyen dynasty to make this decision. Before his death, Kai Ding visited France, where he was likely influenced by the architectural styles there, evidenced by the European influences in his mausoleum. In anticipation, Kai Ding allegedly raised taxes by 30% in order to finance the construction of the lavish tomb. However, Swart and Till argue that while the French, who controlled the nation's finances, did increase taxes substantially during the emperor's reign, they would have been unlikely to do so solely for the purpose of the tomb. Construction began on the 4th of September, 1920, but would not be complete by the time of Kaiding's death in 1925. Kaiding's three-day funeral took place in late January 1926, where a funeral procession traveled from the imperial city to the unfinished tomb. After 11 years of construction and six years after Kaiding's death, the tomb was completed under Baodai, Kaiding's son and successor, in 1931. We're going to take these steps to the lower terrace. Kaiding's tomb contrasts from other Nguyen dynasty tombs not only in its much smaller size, but also with its more elaborate design, fusing Vietnamese and European styles, including Baroque, Gothic, and neoclassical elements. The tomb is of a rectangular structure, leaning against Cho Chu Mountain in the outskirts of Hue. It is largely made of concrete, steel, iron, and slate, and the use of these modern materials, as opposed to wood or brick, was thought to elude power and permanence. The entrance of the tomb complex features a grand staircase, which ends at the first terrace with a triple-arched memorial gateway, including images of two five-clawed dragons contending over a flaming pearl. When closed, the entrance uses wrought iron gates made in France. The position of the tomb was chosen according to traditional feng shui. The tomb is located on Chao Chu Mountain Slope, with a low hill as the front base. Mount Chop Vung and Kim So lie in front as Green Dragon on left and White Tiger on the right. Raise the taxes up to like 40%. 100% imported materials. For example, later you get, get up there, you're gonna see like the uh, cement, the concrete, mostly from France, let's say France. And if you ever see like the ceramic, it's from China and from Japan. Very fancy and very expensive. Ho Chi Minh got a very famous saying about him. Uh, like he was a very loyal salary employee of the French government and nothing more than that. When you go up to the top into the temple, you also gonna see like, a huge statue of the King of Throne. So it was like a reward for the King of Throne because he was just a very loyal employee for the French. And he also, if you see like, the portrait, he put a lot of medals on his chest to show off his loyalty to the French. So now you're gonna walk up this way. I'll show you a bit more.
this is about like the royal courtyard. Those statues in the front and the back. The back is the regular soldiers or servants. So you look at the feet, bare feet in the past. Whoever, bare feet, servant. Servant, and you see the front round, proper shoes. Beyond the way is a salutation court, Sun Chow, with two rows of stone figures and animals lining the pathway to the tomb. The stone statues, a practice originating from China, were meant to protect the grave and guide the spirit of the deceased to and from the tomb. Unlike other Nguyen dynasty tombs, which utilized crude stone figures along single rows, Kaiding's tomb features more detailed officers, attendants, and animals, and its more compact area necessitated using double rows. At the end of the path is a two-tiered octagonal reinforced concrete steely pavilion, Habia, unique compared to other Nguyen dynasty tombs that had square pavilions. The Western-styled building has arched column entrances with side panels decorated with the Chinese character for longevity, show, and surrounded by bats representing blessings. Engraved on the stela is a biography of Kaiding written in classical Chinese, likely authored by senior court officials, but attributed to Kaiding's son and successor Bao Dai. On each side of the pavilion are two tall columns, Trupiu, usually described as obelisks with a stupa on top. At the top terrace is the Thin Deep Palace, which is the main structure of the tomb complex and consists of five connected halls. The grayish-white exterior has five arched entrances flanked by pilasters and divided by prominent pillars, with the number five referencing the five elements. It is in a French colonial style with geometric designs of swastikas, dragons, and longevity symbols carved into the stone along with panels depicting four character phrases taken from the Analects by Confucius. These steps will lead to the entrance of the tomb on the left. The interior of the palace is an explosion of color with lavish embellishments throughout. The ceiling is decorated with nine intricate dragons, originally painted by royal painter Fan Van Tan, and its walls feature intricately designed glass and porcelain decorations. The left hall contains a collection of Kai Din's personal memorabilia, including photographs, gifts from the French government, such as silver and porcelain dinner sets, bejeweled belts, swords and ornaments, as well as a realistic bronze statue, life-size at 160 centimeters in height, of a martial-looking Kai Din in full regalia carrying a sword. In the center of the palace is the altar room, called Kai Then Palace, with three sets of doors leading to a crypt and worship room. The rear room of the palace is home to a temple containing Kai Ding's grave, an altar to him, and another bronze statue of his likeness seated in traditional imperial clothing cast in Marseille. 